my Sock Universe final round of video for this weekend and now we are looking into England and the Netherlands. The Netherlands already finished since Sunday and I said already in my Bundesliga review that I have been uh, considering putting the Netherlands together with Germany and Austria because of that but uh, for now I'll keep them with England. Uh, it may change. It may change if this becomes a common thing. And I have to say, I already saw that uh, next week we have a pretty big game on the evening. So this means Premier League review videos. You can expect the earliest uh, Euro European time Tuesday around lunchtime, but more likely Wednesday in the morning because I take my time with that because I really want to get uh as much information on these as possible especially since since i have to watch highlights uh usually and there is the chance for me to do so um yeah it also is a sad fact that i'm i'm starting to feel a bit better but you know I, at the moment i'm slow speaking of slow internet is slow that's also a reason i'm doing this now in the afternoon ideally I would have a fast city internet connection. It would upload within an hour. Nope, uh, 50 minute video takes almost four hours. Yeah, that's what you get if you live in the woods. That and crazy neighbors, but there are many other benefits that I enjoy. And if you haven't signed up for my Twitter account, I post uh, at the moment, I make this challenge as long as I need to work from home and as long as I have jerseys, let's put it that way. I um, think I can go for a month more, roughly. I'm posting pictures of me wearing a different jersey every day uh, on the balcony and it's a great view there. I just love it. Let's get to the games. Uh, the Premier League, a veritable goal avalanche uh, happening. And uh, the other remarkable thing is after two rounds, and yes, the two, plays, two, two games have not been played. There have not been any draws. It has been all wins. So uh, kind of remarkable. Uh, why are there so many goals? I hear different explanations. I can, I think I mostly sign up for for the one. There has, has, hasn't been really a preseason and things are not gelling on the back lines and there have not been any way that great defenders and with uh, teams now playing more of a press and high line. If that is not working well, then you give up more goals. Is that the only reason? Maybe, maybe, maybe not. I'm sure it will come down in time, but let's see. How it goes. It's very exciting though at the moment and very exciting. I think we can already say was the, the first two games. Everton against West Brom. I think Everton is becoming a sleeper team this season. Yes, they the first and the last goal in this game. Nah, it's not this game, different game. <laughs> there were two five twos and I'm getting excited. You know, I watch all the highlights, I'm getting every, everything and then it just goes all in your brain. No. They go down, uh, Dian Gana in the 10th minute, uh, West Brom, but uh, Calvert Lewin equalizes and then Rodriguez gets his first goal uh, of the campaign. Uh, nice assist by Richard Liston from the outside. He puts it in. Uh, and then I think another decisive thing gives Gibbs um, kind of elbows or whatever. I, I couldn't really, really see it. Uh, James Rodriguez who lies on the pitch. It's giving a red card and Slavon Bilic not very happy about that at halftime is also given a red card and then it actually goes all Everton's way keen and twice Calvert Lewin uh Calvert Lewin by Richard Lisson and Rodriguez assisted make it um make uh, three more although Pereira put one back uh right after the half I think it was a nice free kick if I remember now correctly I also have to say it although I don't like the West Brom jerseys the matchup here that looked nice uh, it's nice to see uh green and yellow Back despite um, Norwich going down. The team to watch surely becomes Leeds United. Another 4 3. And yeah, they are great going forward and they're not great going backward. And that usually makes for an awesome watching. I'm not so sure if it's so awesome for other for, for the coaches. But they take um, lead through Elder Costa in the fifth minute. Mitrovic with a penalty equalizes and then Klich with a penalty gives Leeds a 2-1 lead. After the uh, half, Bamford and Costa add two more, you think game is done and dusted, but then within 10 minutes of the 4-1, Fulham puts two back, uh, really Mitrovic, but Leeds can hang on uh, to the win, which was kind of important with them. 
I was a little bit uh, miffed because I saw that Fulham is playing in a red away jersey in my jersey review, which I don't have yet posted for Fulham, but already shot. I only saw a yellow one and so yeah. <sighs> It's an Adidas template that I was not. I'm not too fond of. I know it should be the Adidas stripe tent template. It doesn't work as a stripe. It's more a thingy. I think um, what was the Mirandes in Spain had a similar one last season. Uh, then I'm wearing Crystal Palace. A because I'm not expecting to wear them a lot, and B uh, the win at Manchester United was kind of impressive. Manchester United not showing a lot. Uh, Townsend gives Crystal Palace or in the seventh minute the lead, uh, the lead and then late in the game the whole thing kind of uh, explodes when I think it was uh, Ayu who plays a ball in that lands on Lindelof's arm. Having watched a lot of Serie A, there's no question that this is a penalty. However, I can see arguments that this is a ridiculous penalty because Lindelof is in a normal running movement. And that please lawmakers take that into account. Don't give me this with the body, see, 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 and so on. Um, it is not a deliberate handball. I think this is what we should come to, that we say a deliberate handball, that should, 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 should be given. I think anything where the player, yes, if you have the arm, yet it's clumsy, but it is not a deliberate handball in, in, in a way. And I can see the arg argument. If all defenders are going like this, yes, you make it harder to get a cross in. And maybe if that's deflected, yeah. But in this case, it was a natural movement. We, I could make a whole video on the handball rule. Anyway, Ayu steps up. And his penalty is saved, but the hair was off the line. And at the moment when I saw this saved, I thought, yeah, it's maybe fairness. No, the fairness, yeah, but then the hair makes another foul in a way. And then they changed the uh, take of Zaha, who actually wanted to leave Southampton. Uh, Crystal Palace, I'm just missing. Ah, yeah. uh, steps up and converts, makes it 2 0. Van de Beek pulls one back. You think, yeah, maybe United can get something away. No, Van de Beek on his debut also. Um, and then Saha makes it 3-1. Big win for Crystal Palace and those Palace jerseys. Mm, really nice. Uh, Arsenal, rather non-glamorous 2-1 win. Lacazette, uh, after nice Obama Young assist, he beats the offside trip and then pulls, pulls it in. But Antonio can equalize. And jersey matchup in that one, I have to say, was also really nice. Um, not the biggest fan of each individual, but just, just this light blue by West Ham against the classic Arsenal look. Really looks nice. Uh, Antonio equalizes, as I said before, the halftime, and then Ketia uh, rather late. It was a labored win for Arsenal, but they, a win they get. Then uh, an unexpected result in many ways um, for between Southampton and, and Spurs. First of all, Kane and Ings have both a uh, goal this love within the first 20, 20, 20, 20 minutes, and then Kane another one for offside. So at first, a lot of action there. Ings gives Southampton the lead, and Southampton was very well in game. Uh, Spurs, you know, typical Spurs stuff. We uh, say in German, nicht fish, nicht fleisch, not fish, not meat. Uh, somewhere in between. But Kane assists Son Young Min for, uh, the, for the equalizer at the half, deep in stoppage time. And that's how it was continues, because right after the half, Kane with another wonderful pass to Son. Uh, to Son it's 2-1 uh, Spurs and Southampton doesn't know what to do and they connect two more times and this is I think the first time that a, a player scores four goals and is assisted by the same player. Uh, in the 64th and 73rd Kane adds a 5th in the 82nd and a late Ings penalty uh, makes it 2-5. Uh, Ralf Hasenhüttl was a little bit yes we didn't play well but we were not that much worse it was just that Hyunming Son was ruthless and they took advantage of the press that Southampton is playing that still is not gelling seem seemingly and that's how you give up a lot of goals. Newcastle abject showing at home to Brighton, don't want to say really much about that, that one except that it was over after 10 minutes with Mope scoring twice. Um, we need to talk about Chelsea against Liverpool which was at first, you know, if 
you're just a casual watcher. You thought that the first half was probably rather boring, and I will concede to that. But it was highly taking, very intense in mid in midfield. There was a lot of work going on, but it was not uh, a highlight real stuff there. Yes, Liverpool had 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 healthy chances, and Chelsea. I think uh, Timo Werner was the point of uh, danger for um, Chelsea. Uh, but advantage Liverpool, but I think a nil nil was not unexpected. However. It all took a turn for the worse uh, for Chelsea when Christensen got sent off. First was given a yellow card. It was last when Mane running through and he basically hugs him from the back. Uh, many say he had to do it because there's not much confidence in Kepa. And yeah, how can there be given his performances of late? I'm sorry. I really think that he never should have cost that 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 much money. If he would cost have cost half that much. I think he would not be as criticized as he is and probably would perform even better. But yeah, Mane, that red card changed the game because uh, Thiago, who just got signed, comes on at halftime for Henderson and suddenly uh, he threads the game and uh, especially the first goal where he puts the ball uh, to Firmino, who puts it back to Salah, who puts it back to Firmino, who nicely puts it uh, in, in the inbox on Mane's head, scores 1-0 in the 50th minute. That was a mathematician's goal. A wonderful, beautiful display of angles, passes, triangles. Wonderful. This was the goal that I really uh, I love to see. It's a team goal where all the attackers and the midfield play in there. Every, everyone works in gels, simply. And then four minutes later, uh, Kepa, I think it's the ball from Aspilicueta, stops it, wants to play it um, to Jorginho, and Mane intercepts it and makes it 2 0. And yeah, Kepa. Uh, it was, it's not his time. As I said, I really feel sorry for the guy because you can see that he is uh, clearly lacking confidence and he needs confidence to get back there. Yes, they're trying to get now, I think, Mondi from uh, Rennes in. Let's see how it, how it goes. The goalkeeping situation at Chelsea is abject because, I mean, Caballero is a backup. It's also not that, 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 that good. Chelsea though gets into the game because Thiago uh, clips Werner. Not sure if there was really a foul there, but maybe it was just enough touch that it is. And Jorginho steps up. This is the first time that I see a Jorginho penalty saved. He hops up and Alisson dives into the right corner. He does not move, he dives late and can save it. Um, and that basically kills the game. And from that moment on, Liverpool runs away rather comfortable and deserve it winners. And as you will see, it's already uh, it's a big first win for Liverpool, who will have another big games. Um, another team that's uh, doing rather well is Leicester, uh, who go down in the 10th minute to Burnley, but then uh, Barnes equalizes 10, 10, 10 times later, and Peter's own goal in the second half, early in the second half, puts Chelsea, uh, puts Leicester, Chelsea. I'm tired, I'm, I'm sick and whatever. Uh, Leicester on the winning way, Justin 61st makes it 3-1, and then Dunn puts him back for, 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 for Burnley, but uh, Pratt gets the 4-2 final score, and Leicester, you know, is playing this style, we're gonna out, we're gonna overpower you, we're gonna out, outscore you, and I think it's a valid approach and makes for fun watching. The Monday games, Aston Villa against Sheffield United, I think everything broke down in the first <laughs> in the first half for Sheffield United. And the jersey matchup, I have to say, the pink jerseys for Sheffield United for me did not work against Aston Villa there. Uh, Egan gets hold, uh, sent off for holding last man. I think you it was the right call. Uh, and they put Sheffield United down already in the 12th minute. Then they even get a penalty that Lundstrom misses, or it's saved basically. Uh, so nothing working for Sheffield United in the first half and in the second half it's mostly Aston Villa. Konza after Ming's uh, assist uh, scores the winning goal. There were chances uh, most notably by um, Grealish. And Aston Villa gets a first win of the season. And then Wolves against City. First of all, again, Jersey matchup. Why is City playing in a very similar shades? And why do we need to see the bad sheet Jersey? Watch my Jersey re review part two uh, to get my opinion. 
that doesn't make sense white uh, with dark blue although the combination looks really nice i have to say but against the uh, gold and black no i think the light blue and white would have worked uh, would have worked just fine so that first up it was a really great performance of first of a man just a city the Bruyne uh gets fouled in the box for a penalty where he you know he just slides slides in if the, if the tackle wasn't there he would have gone into the box and 60 pro probably goal in the 20 in the 30 second uh Bruyne sends Sterling who p uh, pulls it back uh to Foden for another really nicely played uh, goal 2-0 the Bruyne then a huge chance which is nicely saved and you think that Manchester City is gonna run run away with this one leading 2-0 at the half I mean, the second half, and it's similar like to the game last season, the VV, which was probably the greatest game of the last season. Um, there were many chances for um, uh, for Wolves. I think there was one where Raul Jimenez pulls the white impotence at one time, uh, uh, lobs it and puts too much on it. It's until the 78th when they actually should have already scored that um, Jimenez pulls one back and they are pressing forward. However, in stoppage time, Gabriel Gabo Jesus. Then, you know, City at the end kind of got it over the line, let's put it that way, and made it 3 1 starting win. So, a tale of two halves in many ways, and Wolves probably will feel a little bit sorry that they didn't get anything, didn't get anything out of that. The table, Leicester flying high. Look at the goal average 3.722 goals on average at the moment. That's amazing. That's exciting, I have to say. It will come down. I'm pretty sure about that. You also see no draws. That's why the yellow call column there. And that's why also the square balance measure is rather high uh, because we have the group of six, we have a group of threes, and we have a group of zeros. So three classes at the, at the moment that measure soaks stuff like that up. Uh, like nothing else but you know other than that a lot of flip-flopping we cannot say much um, so far except you know Everton Liverpool having a good start Arsenal also getting two wins and Chris Pass I think for the first time we start with two wins and yeah we have also Spurs thanks to uh, this goal flurry in there as well but it's also rather uneven because we had four teams who have only played one game the next round, um, Tasty Ties, Crystal Palace, Everton, and here anyone. I think that becomes almost required watching, but you know, an hour later, we have Saint Etienne Rennes. Might not be uninteresting either. Spurs against Newcastle, now, City against Leicester, I think, is a game that I find uh, rather appealing, but I think a big one is Liverpool against Arsenal, I think. We don't need to talk much. And Sheffield United leads. Watch leads. Watch leads. I think this is, becomes also required what watching now. Let's move in the Eredivisie, where I actually saw highlights and maybe a, a, a little bit of the game of the big boys. PSV getting, uh, I don't want to say a messy win, uh, deserved win over Emmen, but it was a little bit labored overall, um, I have to say. Uh, Madueke gets the 1-0. Um, the own, it was an own goal late that put Emmen in play and PSV missing the chances, but very late Romero. It looks a little bit funny there at goal uh, at first because Coco thought it was an uh, own assisted own goal, but no, it's actually Romero ahead that hits the post and goes in and gives um, PSV uh, the win. A win is not what Feyenoord got against Twente. Twente really playing this uh, smart. Uh, in Rotterdam, however, um, they get only the goal, the early goal through Czerny. In the 28th, uh, uh, short, short before that, um, a penalty is given for uh, Feyenoord that Berghuis takes, but it is uh, saved by, 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 by the goalkeeper. And the rebound, Berghuis runs after and is fouled consequently and another penalty given. Uh, this is a sequence that I don't remember. Uh, very, 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 very often a penalty is given and then from the rebound another penalty is given and this time Berghuis uh, puts in the other corner and makes it 1-1 but Feyenoord cannot find it. It was labored from also and at the end of the game both teams have multiple chances to win it, especially Feyenoord, but cannot convert spectators of course there and I thought that the Rotterdam spectators were sitting quite close. Ajax getting um, 
workmanlike win. Uh, two goals of theirs were disallowed, but uh, the first goal by Tadic in the 10th minute, the way he stands with the back of the goal, takes a high ball and puts it in, this is just a class. Uh, Labiat makes one and then, um, you know, um, the uh, Wahlweig had a player sense and often late after a really nice Tadic cross, Martinez can head it in to make it 3-0. Probably should have been more, but you know, two goals being uh, called, 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 called off, and you know, you just need need to get the win. Other results: Herrenveen gets a big win in Groningen, and without Arjen Robben gets also a win, which leads us now to that table. Herrenveen is the on top of the table. Ajax is second, PSV also there, but Feyenoord is already dropping a little bit. Let's see where this will go. In the next round, do we have anything to look for? Let's look at the big three because those are the games that I get. I mean, 20 against Groningen would be a nice uh, game, but without Arjen Robben, I'm not sure uh, if we get. Uh, Ajax is playing Vitesse. Feyenoord should have no problem with Den Haag and uh, Heracles against PSV. Also, uh, not the barn burner at the moment, but you know, let's see where this will go. Anyway, fill me in if you watch if I missed anything in the Premier League or uh, the Eredivisie. I'd be happy to hear uh, from you. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that would be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. With that, Wish you a wonderful day. Bye.